ignore the black ones, hey? Just look at these ones. I look at the other. Okay, it's a beautiful summer's day. Weather's better than we were expecting. Don't trust the forecast, it seems, for 2021. Yeah, so we're gonna go put a few RCs in the water and hope for the best. It really is a recreational day. So, Cub, number one. Leary's number two. Hey, what? Steeny not on the list. Maybe, Smallie. Smallie. Oh, wow. She big. Wow. <laughs> she real big. Okay, take Steeny off the list. Uh, <laughs> and then maybe something toothy for a change. Some sharks. Bronzy or raggy. Yeah. I have lots of fun facts on raggy, so let's hope we get a raggy. Okay, well, it doesn't look boring, but it does look a little big and very dark and quite cold. You know, when you can just feel it on your cheeks, man. So I thought I'd give you a little origin story on Wolfie. I mean, she really is. An incredible fishing dog. So I used to live on a farm outside Grandstown, a dairy farm, and I was driving into town one day and I saw this guy walking down the hill at the low water bridge with this puppy that was all sellotaped up. Its legs were sellotaped together. So I stopped the car, got out, climbed down, asked him, like, what are you doing with this dog? You know, he's like, no, it's sick and he can't afford it, so he's just gonna take it to the river. So I said, listen, buddy, give me the dog, I'll look after it. You know, the usual sp It's like, no, I'll only give you the dog for 200 bucks. So I landed up grabbing the dog, running up the hill, throwing it in my bucky, speeding off like Vin Diesel. And yeah, it turned out she was really sick. She had parvo, she pulled through that. Then she had this, pancreatitis. But all in all, she looks old. She's about five. But it's mostly just because she's so sickly. Like, we've managed her now. We've almost put it down so many times, but we've always tried this and tried that, and I think we got it down now. Like, she's a really happy dog. She loves the fishing thing. She can't eat just anything, but we manage her nicely with herbal meds, and she doesn't have any terrible side effects from medicine anymore, so, yeah, I mean, she's fishing 101. Like, I think she just lives for Frana, myself. Notice how I put Frana first, and fishing. Like, that's all she cares for in life. they're gonna have a tough day. Oh, 
up all nights at the flat To be real, could you see me making moves while I'm at? I'm still on the grind, every time when I chat I'm burning down sage, keep the demons away When I rally, give a piece of myself to the page I don't do it for the praise, love, that's just how I'm made Hey guys! Bronzy comes in there. Hey! It was really so far out when I got here. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. Help! <laughs> He'll bite you off. Put you off. <laughs> You've been having bad luck, eh? Little teeth. The only person here with little teeth is a bronzy. Hey? That's speed, yeah. I think we're gonna go take revenge. underneath here, hey? Yeah. Some old crap like black bulb. <laughs> Big fish. 
into the park. Half an hour. Easy yes, off. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Your car. <laughs> and it's so wild. So, so wild. This is, did you hear my knees? <laughs> Have yellow back. I repeat, the yellow is back. Okay, we're just about an hour fifteen into the fight. Oh, yeah. Did you check? Yeah, I checked. And we're swimming nicely now. The yellow went back out. And they come back in. Yeah, they are back in. <laughs> so they, apparently, there was a seagull stuck in the line. I threw some mullets, and while I was throwing the mullets back, the seagull flew into the line. So. I almost stuffed it up again. Almost like a netting thing, eh? <laughs> almost uh, stuffed it up. I know when it rang your net <laughs> on the bird. <laughs> she is winning. Are you sure it's still alive? Yeah, it's just tired. It's very tired. You better still be big. <laughs> it's definitely over 100. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Even if you felt some weird shakes, it's definitely still there. <laughs> My endorphins have kicked in, boy! And I feel like a boss! <laughs> They're very slow growing and they're maturing, these sharks, bronzy. Yeah, mommy, chill. Um, so males only mature at around 13 to 19 years old. And by that time they're 2.3, no, 2 meters to 2.4 meters. Whereas females only mature at 19 to 20 years old, which is the point they're 2.3 to 2.5 meters. That's ridiculous. That's Crazy. obviously total length, eh? Yeah. The big ones have actually been aged, but the oldest is 34 30 years for a male, 25 for a female. Whoa, so they actually have a very short period at the end of their life where they can actually breed. And the females, they'll carry about 15 to 16 pups, and it's placental. So just like humans, they have a placenta, they're viviparous. And 15 to 16 pups, and they can just stay for an average of 12 months, but sometimes. Some studies have shown as long as 21 months. That's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous.
So recreational angling, as we all know, is unfortunately a blood sport. And even during catch and release events, we are still having some level of impact on these animals. So one of the big problems with targeting these apex predators, as exhilarating and fun filled as it is, is exhaustion. So these one, two, three hour fights lead these animals to become quite tired. And in that, they build up lactic acid in their muscles from a lack of oxygen. So just like you would get cramps while running a marathon, so does these sharks. But there's a few things we can do to try and minimize this lactic acid buildup and to try and release stronger sharks. So the first would be to handle fish quickly. So get the shark um, back into the water as quickly as possible. Always go fishing with a buddy and make sure your buddy has the hook remover, the tags um, loaded, the camera ready for pictures before he even try or she even tries to land the shark. The second would be to never lie a shark on its side. Sometimes a shark will roll in the wash but correct it onto its belly as quickly as possible because as soon as you land a shark, um, lie a shark on its side, you're building lactic acid on that side of the body and it makes it really difficult for that fish when it's cramping on one side just from away properly. And lastly, it should be quite obvious to keep a shark in the wash zone and not very far away from the water. So never have a shark on dry sand. You want to close the water so you can get it back into the water as quickly as possible. The second problem we have with targeting these beautiful predators is that just like all things that live in water, they are living in a buoyant environment. And the spines of sharks are only reinforced by cartilage, which actually makes them quite fragile. So. We know from studies that did x-rays on spines of sharks and complex medical imagery that as soon as you bend a shark's spine, you're setting it up for long-term damage because of the inflammation in the musculature around the spine. So it's important, number one, never pull back the heads of the shark for photos. So never try expose the jaws because what you're doing is you're injuring the spine at the base of the head. Number two is never hold a shark um, with a bent spine. So holding a shark up or putting it in these awkward, unnatural positions for its spine um, is definitely not good for the shark. Number three is keep the spine straight at all times, including when you're dragging the shark back to the water. And lastly, when you are dragging the shark back to the water, only do so when there's water around the shark's body supporting its weight. Dragging a animal of this size on dry sand is less, far less than ideal. And also to add to in injury is to always, when shark fishing, use debob circle hooks. Any fishing, but definitely with sharks. Because no matter how um, prepped you are going in for this fight, the chances of you losing that trace to that shark is actually quite high. And what you want is that if you do get cut off, you want that trace to pop out of that fish's mouth so it doesn't have this massive trace following it. So the reason we want to do this is because we want to keep the sport fishery sustainable and we can only do that by being responsible anglers and trying our very best to minimize our impact.